Welcome back to the Literate Nerds. I am joined once again by Casey Lansdale for the Literate Revisit, which is our weekly in-depth talk about a beloved piece of nerd-adjacent media. Uh, this episode, we are discussing the 1994 TV horror masterpiece, American Gothic, which included Sarah Paulson's breakout television role and was created by former Hardy Boy and frequent 1970s Tiger Beat subject, Sean Cassidy. If you can believe that, you know, is Sean Cassidy a little bit, is, he's a little before your time, right? Case. Yeah, a little bit. I, it's, it's funny, you know, I, I really enjoyed watching this because it was sort of like, Oh, these are people that I have not seen at this stage of their life. And, and so it was fun to watch. Yeah. Well, Gary Cole, um, you know, is, uh, he did this, I think he did this before the Brady Bunch movie. Um, he had been on the show Midnight Caller previous to that. Uh, Sarah Paulson has got to be like, I mean, she's maybe 20 years old. If that. Yeah, that was that was crazy seeing her. I, you know, I didn't realize, I guess, you know, you just don't really start paying attention to where people start until, uh, until you see them in, in an earlier role. And then it's like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that I'd actually been seeing them this whole time. Uh, I, I'm trying to even think of, of the first thing that I maybe what women want maybe is the first time I had any kind of concept of, of her as an actress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I watched this show in its initial run. Um, I got turned on to it by my buddy Stu Goldstein, who, strangely enough, is also the person that turned me on to your father's work. Um, Stu's turned me on to a lot of great stuff. Uh, just recently, 30 Coins, uh, the new HBO series by Alex Iglesia, uh, which is a Spanish language horror series, which I've been recommending ad nauseum. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, you should definitely check that out, too. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, American Gothic, the premise of this show, is that it takes place in a small town called Trinity, North Carolina, which has uh, got the uh, lowest high crime uh, rate anywhere in the state, but evidently has the highest missing person rate. It's like the Bermuda Triangle of South Carolina. Tourists go there and just disappear. And the town is run by um, Sheriff Lucas Buck, who is played by the aforementioned Gary Cole, who is may or may not be the devil. <laughs> you know what? His character, and this is really interesting, and, and what a good casting, because he always kind of has that I'm a sleazy, but kind of charming sort of actor guy. I mean, it, it, I see how this could have been really appealing. And it's on one hand, it's a shame that they canceled it so quickly now that I've seen this. And on another hand, I get exactly why they canceled it so quickly. Yeah, it's <laughs> because it, it's kind of like, it, well, you know, American Gothic, it's very much that Southern Gothic horror stuff that uh you know uh your dad writes and you know and and you know the robbie howard wrote and you know there's certainly i you know poppy z bright does as well right she's she's the uh, orleans right yeah um, i mean it's true detective before we had true detective <laughs> right yeah you know so it's it's weird i i was i it, I, I'm con I'm conflicted on how I feel about it because there's parts of it that are just awful, and then there's other parts that are so fun, and that I think I, and I went into it knowing nothing about it other than you saying, "Hey, check out this series." So now I I want to watch it because I think it's it's well done for what it is, and then it's also a lot of corny things and things that just you know we've outgrown so quickly with technology, but um, yeah. What a fun episode, you know? I mean, the, the premise of it is really interesting. And I cheated and read the uh, Wikipedia about the whole program after I watched the episode. And my goodness, there's some dark stuff going on. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I mean, we, we, we started with episode, the second episode of the series because I really think it, I, the pilot's quite good, but I really think the second episode is uh, uh, arguably one of, you know, one of the best of the entire season. Um, and basically what I, the, the main character is a young boy named Caleb who may be Lucas's illegitimate child. 
uh, right. Lucas may have raped Caleb's mother and um, and uh, Caleb's sister, Marilyn, uh, uh, may have witnessed it. And she's uh, in a like a autistic state. You know, she's nonverbal. Um, uh, she, uh, she'll repeat someone's at the door, someone's at the door. And in, in the pilot episode, it's implied that Caleb's dad was going to smash her in the head with the shovel. And he, cause he was going out of his mind and he's like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't kill my little girl. And then Sheriff Buck proceeds to break Marilyn's neck and pin the death on Caleb's father and Caleb tries to escape and, and runs off and ends up burning the house down. And that's the end of the pilot episode. And then it takes up right after that. Caleb is on the run. Uh, and uh, we meet uh, Dr. Crower, who is the new town doctor, who is very suspicious of, of Lucas Buck. Um, and uh, Caleb's cousin, who is a, uh, a journalist and immediately takes a dislike to Sheriff Lucas Buck. Um, and I'm pulling up their names right now. I should have had it. Uh, 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 it's pa- Paige, Paige Turco. Turco. Yeah. Yeah. And Jake Weber, who I've mm-hmm. gone on to have incredible careers also. Um, so. <laughs> well, you know, what was funny was, was seeing uh, Lucas Black because he was kind of the, the kid that you saw in that time period. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I, it was, you know, I, I didn't realize that it's just, you know, it's, it's weird to watch something that's over 20 years old and then to go, Oh, that person, Oh, that person. And I'm still kind of (laughs) coming to terms with it. But what I will say is when I heard him speak, I was like, finally someone with a thicker accent than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, a thicker Southern accent, because I mean, believe me, it's, uh, you know, I got, I, I got Hempstead Turnpike dripping on him, uh, dripping off of mine. You know, it's just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's funny. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, um, uh, 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 the doc takes a ride back to town with uh, the sheriff's uh, deputy, you know, and the doc's pressing him about it. And he's, you know, says, you know, Lucas gives people second chances. Uh, and the doc's like, yeah, but second chance, no matter what it costs you. And then there's this really awkward conversation between the deputy about the fact that Caleb's father allegedly killed himself with a pen and of course it's the pen that lucas right, took right. From the deputy earlier <laughs> so that way he can you know he's got the deputy as a scapegoat later on obviously um right so then we uh we see that the the of course the medical examiner is uh is in on it and he's going in to falsify the autopsy and uh after he falsifies the autopsy, falsifies the autopsy on the dad, and then falsifies the autopsy on Marilyn, and the lights start to flash, the doors slam, blood starts scrolling on the walls. Someone's at the door. Um, he gets all freaked out, tears off out of the place, and we find out that um, the uh, the school marm, uh, <laughs> who is played by uh, uh, Brenda Backby. Who is um Selena uh-huh. Coom- Selena Coombs is the character's name. She is uh evidently had some trouble with one of her rowdy students and he bit her. So she needs a tetanus shot. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I love the school mom on this show. I love Brenda Backey in this part. She's absolutely fantastic. Um so She's distracting him. The ME gets stuck in the autopsy room. Um, we go back to Lucas Buck uh, and uh, Caleb's cousin, um, Gail, and uh, they're you know basically talking. And Gail informs Lucas that he was there when her parents died, and that you know he right, witnessed right. the parents' death, and that's why she's never come back to the town. Um. So we go back to the, 
<laughs> the doc and the school mom, and he's trying to usher her out, and she's just all over him, you know, oozing sex appeal, you know, trying to trying to get him all head up, as I believe you would say down south. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is correct. <laughs> and, uh, Accurate. Um, and then we we come upon the graveyard, and there's the grave digger and his his daughter. Who, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, th- that's a weird pairing. The way they, they portray them, that's a weird pairing. Te- yeah, teapot well, and uh, and daddy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and I like I said, th- th- those characters are like stepped like step like right out of one of your dad's books. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, they're they're it's bizarre. You know, there's it's, I, I it's, think it's Sean funny. Cassidy might have been influenced by your dad's stuff because this. This came out a couple of years after your dad. I mean, right, it came out right around the same time as um, Mucho Mojo. Well, no, Mucho Mojo was out like two years before this. So yeah, I'm trying to think of what it would be. So eighty nine, see ninety. Yeah, there would have been a, a hefty body of work. I mean, you never know. You know, I mean, honestly, yeah. it would not surprise me because that's just kind of the nature of it. But yeah. it, it's unique enough that that I don't see a you know a complete comparison but i definitely uh yeah yeah well that's nice and uh <laughs> i i was being more tactful but correct no but i mean there's definitely some some overlap there but they it's an interesting show and uh i kind of wish that they would do a reboot with that premise yeah i really i really think that the it's a show that could definitely use a reboot because what uh, is the new american gothic i, I don't even know what that is I think it's about uh, cursed pieces of that. art. They're like looking for cursed pieces of art or something. Oh, okay. So they just that are named after famous paintings. American paintings. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So well, kinda... yeah, because I I clearly have not seen that either. But um, yeah, you know they ought to do this because didn't kind of like they did a Twin Peaks revival. Yeah. This yeah, would, they did. This would blend itself to this that same kind of feeling. And and then I say that and then think, but Jesus, do we need another reboot? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Well, you know, I was I was joking around this the other day with uh, uh, my producer Alex DeShane. We were talking because I happen to have the Maltese Falcon on in the background, and I was like, uh, "People are always complaining about remakes." I said, "It's the third time the Maltese Falcon was made into a movie, you right. know? and that's the Humphrey Bogart version." So you know, right. Hollywood's yeah. just been you know Hollywood's been doing fan fiction and remakes forever. Um, well, I'm not against remakes, but I mean, it's just, you know, you, me, I mean, how many people do we know that have wonderful original material that, uh, we wish people would, would take a look at and put out there. So, you know, I'm, I'm open to either if they do a remake and it's done well, awesome. If they take something new and it's done well, awesome. You know, there's, as long as content is being made and things are being created, that's really what we're after. Right on. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully, you know, people, you know, we, we, we like and, and know are making a couple of bucks along the way. Um, so uh, anyway, so the, the, Gail starts pressing Lucas about this journalist from Miami that went missing, uh, you know, like six months earlier that came down to Trinity and that was investigating stuff and he's gone missing. And she was told this by her editor and she's snooping around and we find Caleb, uh, you know, after seeing that his, you know, his sister and his father are buried side by side and having a really an emotional moment, takes off and he ends up finding this abandoned house. And he breaks in and he's, you know, settling in. He's got a candle and he's walking around and he finds, and it's like the one jump scare in the episode. But so he, when you say your favorite, one of your favorite horror moments is in this episode, which moment is it? I, Cause I kept trying to pick which moment was it that moment or no, was it's, it? In it's, the, it's a, it's a, line of, it's a line of dialogue towards the end of the episode, which I'm, uh, which I'm going to get to. Um, you find this, this guy, Caleb finds this man who's uh, uh, manacled uh, and tied up and can't speak. And, and is, you know, obviously suffering from hypothermia and starving. And, you know, he's been there for a long time. And so Caleb decides to go try and find the doc and bring him back to help the guy out. And so the doc comes back with, with Caleb and, and his cousin. They find this guy um, and they get his ID or, or Caleb uh, rather brings the ID with him to find 